Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, and you are watching Actors Daily Bread. This is where I teach you how to crush your auditions, book more work, and live a life that you love. I'm Christine Horn, professional working actress of 20 plus years, and a life and career coach for actors just like you. I'm live on Facebook. I'm live on Instagram. What's up, Instagram? What's up, Facebook? If this is your first time watching Actors Daily Bread, I want to welcome you, because this is episode 130. 80. And today I'm talking about escaping the golden handcuffs. Now this is really, I'm really talking to my actors out there who are on Broadway or who have been on national tours for a while, but this can also spill over to you at home who has been holding on to that job or thing that has been holding you back because it's like the dangling carrot. So on Broadway and in film, and Broadway and in theater, we call it the golden handcuff. So I wanna talk about that today and planning your escape route. <laughs> um, yeah, this is your first time watching. I want to just welcome you. Uh, put a one in the comments if this is your first time watching so I can welcome you. Hi, hi, hi. So all my replay watchers who will watch this later, what's up? Replay watchers? Love you guys. So let's get into it. As you know, this has been, I've been going live almost every day. I've been trying my best uh, because we're gearing up for me teaching in Atlanta next Saturday, the 24th. Hi, Miss Fontaine. Well, welcome. Right? And so I'm teaching at the Bronze Lens Film Festival. It's called Level Up to Stardom. I'm teaching from 10 to 6. You're going to walk away with confidence, self-taping tips, branding, scene study, knowing how to break scripts down. I mean, all of that. We're going to go so deep. And because of that, I wanted to just, just keep showing up and putting bugs in your ear, whether you come to Atlanta or not. Um, but if you are interested, the link is in my bio or above or below. So let's get into today, all right? So there's a phrase, again, we use, the golden handcuffs. And so there are some of you out there who have been wanting to try something new. Some of you have really want to go into film and TV. And again, this is a kind of a tailored talk tonight. It may not apply to all of you. So I'm really talking to my Broadway actors or people who have been on national tours and you know you want more, but because the check is so good, you're afraid to leave. So let me tell you a story. Back, you all know, most of you know, I did The Lion King for like five years. And I remember the first after, I'm very goal oriented. So for me, it was like, cool, I'm in the ensemble, I'm an understudy. Then I was like, ah, oh, now I'm Nala, cool. Now I want to go to Broadway, went to Broadway, bam. Oh, Vegas, sure, bam. You know, oh, you want to fly me to Germany? Cool. I left in between those times. And I remember the first time I told people I was leaving when I first, y'all know my story, first moved to Los Angeles in like 2011. And I remember I put my notice in and it was a good check. It was a very cute check. Let's be clear. They always are. And I remember people looking at me like, you leaving this good, job? they're like, you leaving this good job? <laughs> you leaving this good job? And I was like, yeah, like I want more. And people would be like, more? This is Broadway. Like this is the tour. Like what? It was almost like what more could there be? But I just always knew in myself, I, I'm a goals getter. I set the goal, I achieved the goal, and I'm like, okay, it's time to move on. But I was aware people had been on the show for 13 years, 10 years, original cast. And I was like, that's cool. No disrespect, that's awesome, but that's not my path. I want to do film and TV. I want to do other things. I'm an artist. I just want to create. I remember leaving the show and the first gig I booked in Los Angeles was at Celebration Theater. We did the Women of Brewster Place. It was a musical. And I got paid $11 a show. You heard me. One, one, 11. Hey, Ernest. Hey, Brandon. Right? And to some people on the outside looking in, like, what are you doing? I'm like, I am being creatively fulfilled. And sure, after that, I went back to the show every now and then, a few times they called me. And I was always so grateful. But the thing is, how many of you are at home or working on a show and you're just scared to leave? 
And now the show that was once this blessing, once this amazing opportunity is now almost holding you hostage because you've built a life around it. You've built a lifestyle. If you don't get that check every, every week, how will you, you sustain yourself? But let's speak to the deeper issue because it's really, trust me, I, I, it's hard to say no to money and opportunity especially if you haven't booked in a while or you had to go back to work your nine to five or wait tables or bartend and they like, come back. Don't you want to come back? Like, can you just fill in for eight more months? Can't you just fill in for six weeks, 10 weeks in the middle of pilot season? And that keeps pushing back your dream, pushing back your dream, pushing back your dream, pushing back your dream. Even if you are training, if you're not doing the work in real time, you're not able to practice and execute fully in the moment. When you're on a show that is, you're doing eight shows a week and you only have off Monday. And if you're new, the odds of you getting off, unless it's in your contract, is really hard. So you keep pushing it back. And so this one, you have to decide what is next for me in this next chapter. But here's the deeper part of it that I want to speak to that most people are not speaking to. I believe, and this may not be your case. Some of you are staying on the shows that you're on, whether it's a Broadway show or a tour, because you have stopped believing in the talent that you had that even got you that gig in the first place. I'm going to say it again. I would see people on tour with me and so talented but they were scared to leave, scared to audition for something else next because they were like, what if I don't get it? What if I'm not good enough? I've been doing this show for five years or seven years, and now my audition is my my audition muscle is rusty. Because that's what happens. You do the same show over and over again. Your voice, everything is positioned for that. If it's a straight play, everything is used to that. You lose, the auditioning is a muscle. So when we move to film and television, which is a whole different beast, this is why I'm always telling you, oh, you don't have auditions? You need to be taping something. Do something. It's a muscle. Some of y'all think I'm just going to wait until the opportunity comes, then I'll practice. No, boo, it's too late. You should have been practicing, rehearsing, so that when the opportunity presents itself, that muscle is ready. A dancer don't be like, I'm not going to dance. I'm just not going to stretch. I'm just gonna when when I have a when I get a concert when I get a gig I'll dance. No, they have to stretch every single day. Otherwise, it's like use it or lose it. They gotta use the muscle, use the instrument. And so some of you are just scared to move into your next chapter because of the unknown, fear of the unknown, which I totally get. But that's not a good enough answer. Not when you want more. Now, if you're like, cool, I'm good, because I know this was the, the, the reality for many people on Broadway. I'm good. I, it be, the Broadway show then becomes your day job. You check in, you check out. I remember going on Broadway before my premiere, and I was like, I'm so excited. It's a Broadway show. My dream come true. Like places, and I'm like, I'm like getting ready to go, and someone's like, uh-uh, not yet. Honey, they checked out. Like They might as well have a cigarette. Not all of them, by the way. Not all of them. Some people, it's become so whatever, it's not even special no more. So anything, anything can become rote and routine if you are not careful. So for some of you, that golden handcuffs is that day job that you won't let go of. You say you want more flexibility to do this craft, but you make you keep yourself at a job that ha, that is going in a whole different direction that requires you to work 50 hours a week and there's not even room for more to come in you have to make space for what you want to bring in and so i want to challenge anybody who's watching that is feeling stuck and they know they want more but are afraid because Okay, let me say it this way too. Uncertainty doesn't feel good to any of us. I'll be the first to admit that. But I have a knowing of not just my gifts, my worth, but I have a knowing that God does amazing things in my life. 
I have a knowing that if I first visualize what I want to experience and then I then craft a plan and I might need help crafting that plan, but I just trust that more is, there's more for me. I just trust that. It's the same reason why you may get an audition invitation and if you are not feeling it, only doing the audition or only going because you fear you may not get anything else, that's a lack mindset. That happened to me last week. Something came through and I was like, mm, I'm not feeling this. And part of my brain was like, well, you don't have anything else to do today or that day. Nothing else is on your calendar. And I was like, it's not about that. It's about what I want to do next. It's about what work I desire to put out into the world. It's about how I want to represent the Christine Horn brand next. It's not about, is my calendar day free? It's not about, let me just book this job real quick. What do I want? And so I hit decline. And then like the next day, a series regular audition came in. Whereas the one before was like something for new media, was a small, and I was like, <laughs> proven again, Com confirmation again. So we can't make decisions out of fear of not having another opportunity. And so what that will look like, the first step, if you want to walk away with the tip today, outside of getting clear on what you want, Trusting in yourself, trusting in your talent, the same talent that got you where you are can get you to your next level. If you're feeling rusty, get in the class, hire a coach, do what you need to do to work in that new medium. And so this started today, Escaping the Golden Handcuffs, this episode started today with a really specific message to my Broadway actors and people in national tours who are scared to make the leap because they don't know what may happen next. I'm here to tell you, you are worthy. You have the talent. You just have to take the step and take the chance and know nothing is guaranteed ever. That's the, that's, this is the life we signed up for. But I'd rather lay my head down at night. That may mean I'm pinching a couple coins. It may not be a $2,000 check, $2, check every week anymore, right? I may be living off savings for a bit, but if I have a plan, it can happen because guess what? You will blink and it'll be another year. A blink, another year. Blink, five years more. Wow, I've been on this show this long. Wow, I've been meaning, am I too old now? And then the, the drive and the desire will just start to slowly dwindle away. And then more voices will come up letting you know you took too long. Oh, you took too long. Oh, now you got kids. Oh, now you moved. Oh, now this. And all that time, if you hadn't been working that audition muscle, because you've been complacent and comfortable, not staying sharp, oh yeah, it is gonna be a hard uh, adjustment. Not impossible. So work the muscle and know that you can have whatever it is that you desire, not make decisions out of fear. More is coming, more is available. There's just more. There's just more. Make a decision today to go for what it is that you really want. I know we're adults and I know we are we have to make decisions because we're responsible. And I'm not saying not to be, but I think you also owe it to yourself to make sure you're serving the piece of you that needs to be fed every day in some way. Let me check these comments. I hope y'all picking up what I'm putting down. <laughs> Yes, Tuesday. She said, everything attached to me wins. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Hey, Sean. He says, Epiphany. Dawn says, good stuff. Thank y'all for hanging with me tonight. Thank y'all. Hi, Maggie. Hi, TC. Hi, Richard. All right, so hold on to that tonight. And again, all of you are not dealing with the, the golden handcuff situation, and it may be showing up in different ways for you. All of you are not on Broadway or national tours. That was a special word I wanted to give that community because I come from that community, and I know how scary it is to try a different medium. It's so uncertain. And you're like, I know musical theater. I know how to audition for that. Like, this is out of my comfort zone and uh, I'll just do another show. Now I'll just do another show. <laughs> Especially if you live in New York or Chicago, it's so easy. Even if you have a representation, you're like, I want to do film TV. They're like, uh-huh, okay, great. Here's this new show audition. Because honey, they're trying to get that check. They're trying to get that 10%. They ain't worried about what you're trying to do. 
Like, oh, okay, sure. Here's another t a theater audition. There you go. Because sooner or later, you're like, well, I got to pay the bills. Oh, I'll take it. Six month contract, another year long contract, another year, another year, another year. And then you're like, didn't I say I was trying to do TV and film? Hmm. Have an amazing night, everybody. My husband is making spaghetti and I can't wait to eat some because <laughs> I've been talking for hours. But listen, if you missed any part of this, this will replay. Again, this is Actors Daily Bread. If you like this show, come over to YouTube, come to the podcast where it gets repurposed and subscribe so you never miss an episode in case you don't catch me live. Um, thank you for all of you who hung out with me tonight. Thank you for the love, Instagram. I see the hearts. Thank you for the love, Facebook. Um, but yeah, keep feeding and fueling your soul and just binge when you need to. Um, and thank you all for all of you who purchased my book, Playing Small. If you have want to deal with and strengthen your mindset and to become a booking magnet and to work, 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 you'll love my book, Playing Small, because I talk all about it. All right. Have an amazing night. Thanks for hanging with me. Bye. Bye, Facebook.